Hi, it's episode 35, season 3 of the Top Lots of the Family Podcast. My name's Jav, joining me this week, Joss Heddington from Chelmsford, Chelmsford. Good afternoon, everybody. And David Fornell from Sussex. Hey, afternoon. Hey. Right, G- good weekend all? Oh, just slightly. No, I've, I've had worse. So, um, we've finally gone and done it. Second second in the table, finished above Woolwich for the first time in in 20, however many years. It 22, was, isn't it? 22 not years. That, not that anyone's counting, eh? Yeah. Um, it never looked in doubt, did, did it? We also, I think we um, qualified for, for pretty much for sure for the for Champions League yesterday. Um, Manchester United can count catch us in points but they'll have to overtake us in uh, goal difference in goal difference yeah with four games yeah. left and I yeah think... and that's probably more important in truth I'd like to see how Manchester United are going to catch us in points with the with the way that they play football at the moment <laughs> I don't think I don't think there's enough enough time left in the season for um for good old Marcus to keep diving in the boxes there he must have spent a lot of time training with Ashley Young <laughs> Well, they, Dreadful. They say these things rub off. Um, all right, let, let's let's talk about yesterday's game. Um, I, I was just just before we, before we started recording, I, I was saying saying to David, and I probably get shot down by every Tottenham fan for saying this, but I'm I'm feeling slightly a little bit underwhelmed about yesterday, and the, and the reason is this: um, when we when we played Chelsea back in January, I, I thought that. That two 0 win meant a lot more to me at the time compared to yesterday. And yesterday, I just felt that it was no contest really. They they were poor, they were shit, and they have been all season. And it was pretty much. And we were just, you know, Tottenham. We we, we were just this well old machine that turns up defensively solid, can tear teams apart, and can get the job done. And I thought I thought we did that. Um, but um, I don't know. I'm I'm happy, obviously, but I just feel a little bit bit un, un, underwhelmed, really. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I, I'm with you a bit. Um, there's a little bit of underwhelmment because you're you're not sort of picking up a trophy at the end of it, and there isn't a trophy at the end of it. All we've done is beaten a middling side. I mean, they're seventh, aren't they? For Christ's sakes, um, and they're very fortunate that the teams below them aren't doing much better, quite frankly. Um, and, and we, we completely outclass them. We, we never really had a shot to save of any consequence yesterday, and I never felt anything other than confident that uh, we would um, we would beat them. So yeah, I mean it's um this was this was on the cards weeks ago, really. We were going to finish above them, so it's it was just really rubber stamping it, wasn't it? Yesterday, that was it. It's official. <laughs> I tell you what, I agree completely with what Dave said there, but Jav, I'm really glad you've said that because I felt exactly the same yesterday. Um, it, I came out of this ground, I was standing at the um, at the exit to the North Stand just under the new stadium there, and people were walking up and down the high road singing North London is ours, and, and, and the atmosphere was fantastic. But I, I, yeah, I too felt slightly underwhelmed, having, having been at the Chelsea game. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know what it says. I, I thought it was me. I thought it was, you know, I don't know. It was it, it kind of, I don't know. I thought perhaps I'd missed out on something with, with the Arsenal. But it, I think what it actually was is deep down within inside me, there was almost um, a kind of uh, a sort of an expectancy that we would we would turn them over. Um, you know, whereas with Chelsea, they, you know, obviously them being top of the table and, and being the, the, the form side, it, it as far as I was concerned, provided a much tougher, um, a much, you know, tough, tougher game. Whereas yesterday, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of felt a little bit flat. I mean, not flat. I mean, that's wrong. I sound like a 
a fucking lunatic, you know, having tur- <laughs> turned the Gunas over 2 0. But yeah, I agree. I, yeah, there was. Um, the, the Chelsea game meant more to me, especially because that would have, um, if they'd have beaten us, that would have uh, that would have become the Premier League um, record, wouldn't it, for the most consecutive um, wins in a row? I think. Yeah. No. I, th- I, th- I think. I mean, just over twelve months ago, you and I were at, um, at, at the uh, at the Etihad um, when when we did City over. Oh, on, on Val- that, that was, that a, was you know. A- that was a very good day. It was a very good day. Two evenly matched teams. A good journey up. A good good journey back down. Um, and even even if we're going to compare like for like previous games against Arsenal along down the years when when we've beaten them, and there haven't been that many, but in recent times, um, I can think um, the when we played them in the in the, in the Carling Cup as it was a few years ago. And it was a semi-final. We won that five win. That was a special night. Um, yesterday was. Don't get me wrong. It was good. Um, I'm glad. We, I'm glad we finally actually put it to bed. This whole finishing above them, and um, that's it. Now I just hope we we can get on as a club and and stop. Look, there are rivals, but but we we need to start to look at the bigger picture. Um, and I still, I still think, and we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute. But I still think, I still think there is a possibility, however slim it is, that, that we can catch Chelsea. Um, yesterday's match, uh, performance-wise, um, I thought that Jan Vertonghen and Davis had really good games. Um, when Yama did his thing in the middle, um, Ericsson again, superb, absolutely superb, and obviously. Um, Ali and and Kane popping up with with vital vital goals this season. Um, yeah. David, was there, was there a particular player that caught your eye? Well, I thought for Tongan. I thought he was imperial yesterday. <clears throat> I, I thought he really, real quality. But that's the, that's the strength, I suppose. If you're an opposing coach at the moment, you, you you look at the videos and you think, right, who are we going to pick out? Right, Ali. We'll mark him out the game. Make sure. That he doesn't do anything. Well, that's what um, Palace did with uh, Eden Hazard, and then Chelsea hadn't got a great deal else after that. But with us, that the threat comes from so many places um, that it's very difficult for a coach to ultimately snuff us out. Um, and and yes, today was it wasn't our best performance of the season by any means, and it wasn't a typical derby either. There wasn't a lot of sort of thrashing tackles going in, and and a sort of little bit of after. It was relatively quiet for that, and that's why so often they end up as draws, what should be. But that's why I think Arsenal were so poor because, goodness sake, this was a derby, lads. You know, you're only going to turn up with a team. Didn't really, but we did what we needed to do. Um, we, 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 we slowed, the first half we were a little quieter. Second half we upped the pace, and uh, by by far we were the better side. We we're far more solid and always look like scoring. Although you're always worrying until that first goal goes in, you always think something's. Uh, just not going to happen on the day, but yeah, I, 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 I would I pick anybody else? Out? No, Vertonghen was a, was was the best of, of what was a very good team display. Yeah, I agree with that. Vertonghen was good, but for more for, for me, it was more about what we did offensively rather than defensively. Vertonghen is, is has been good for four or five years. Um, out of real brilliant Trippier, he's a better crosser of the ball for me than um, for Walker. Davis is just. You know, he's not as offensive as Danny Rose, but he's a solid player. But for me, it was um, Son. Son, he just, he gave Arsenal so much to think about. He's such a, he's such a, when he's got the ball clear of his feet, he's such a deft player. He uses his left foot, his right foot. He's positive. He's always driving into the box um, and he causes real problems. And and I agree. I think, um, I think Arsenal would have had an eye on Deli Alley. But um, they definitely would have taken their eye off off of Van Min Son, and yesterday I thought he delivered again. Um, yeah, and, and and I think he's, he's he's this season he hasn't really received the plaudits that he, he he's deserved of. Um, you know, especially when we look at the time that Kane spent out and the goals he scored. Yeah. I think he's been he's been superb this season. Uh, genuinely, you know, well worth the money. Bearing in mind the kicking he took in the first season when he got here. Absolutely, I think particularly in the second spell when we lost Kane, because you know we've had him out. I think for for eight matches overall, eight Premier League matches overall this season. Um, in the first spell, we, although we didn't lose any league games then, we drew, we drew an awful lot. Uh, I, I, I remember some getting a few, but 
we at that point we really looked like we missed him and obviously we had Toby out as well. The second spell when Kane Kane was out, we just got on and, and, and won the matches and Son got a lot of goals even even when Kane was, was was back. Would you say that now he's Joss, would you say now he's an integral part of our squad going forward? Uh, Javed, absolutely. That, I, yeah. I think I think the eleven that started yesterday out of out of that eleven, you would possibly look at Rose and Walker to start instead of uh, instead of Davis and instead of Trippier. But other than that, Sonny, I, I mean, I just get so pissed off with various people on social media outlets that begin with T um, who keep pointing towards Wilfred Zaha, saying, "Oh yeah, you know, get him in and he'll be the difference." and it's bullshit, you know. It's it's complete nonsense because who, who would you drop, you know, to play Zaha? It's Son is a is a genuine starter. Lamella, I don't think will get back in the side. I think you know he's. I don't think he'll kick another ball for us personally. But yeah, Son is a he's an underrated player as far as I'm concerned, and he deserves you know every single every single standing ovation he gets when he comes off the pitch, like he received yesterday. It, as far as I'm concerned, he's deserve it off. Mm. On, on on the Zaha thing, uh, don't really want to talk about that too much. But I, I think if if the rumours are to be believed, I could see him coming in to, to, to Soko and giving us something down on the right hand side. Yeah, but Sissoko doesn't start, mate. You know, he's, Sissoko's just you know, no, as I said, you know, who would you drop to play him? No one. Yeah, well, that's oh, the problem with Zaha. <laughs> No, I, I could. He too, if he comes in, he's never going to start, is he? Zaha's going to come in on the bench, and I don't know if he'll want to come to us for that reason. He'll end up at uh, the same situation he had at Manchester United. Hmm. Um, what, knob, knobbing the manager's door? <laughs> um, well, well, we, we, had a, we had a few, <laughs> few comments um, around <laughs> yesterday's game. Um, John Steggles says, Joss, will your will you use your newfound TV fame for the forces of good? So, Joss, just explain um, what John means by this. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't actually know. I, I haven't seen myself on the telly. We were, um, yeah, basically the uh, <clears throat> myself, my mate Rich, and, and our two lads were sat in the uh, in the front row of uh, block. Uh, 16 I think it was at the West Lower and uh, Rich decided to wear a coat that is you would normally see worn, worn by a steward um, uh, it was bright orange and uh, we decided before the game that we were going to print some something out um, along the lines of you know up the arse or whatever uh, uh, you know just wave in the last couple of minutes should we be 8-0 up and um, and somebody get a throw in near us and it just so happened that we weren't 8-0 up but you know we were able to uh, expose our in Arsenal we trust uh, printouts uh, live on telly and uh, yeah it appears that Piers Morgan's got the ump um, he's picked uh, up on it the Daily Mirror the BBC there's a few people as for newfound fame I don't know about that I'm, I'm, I think I'm notorious really is, is the phrase I'd use but the forces of good yeah I mean John, what, what are the forces of good? I don't know. You know, phew, uh, make cheaper beer. I don't know. Yeah, that's yeah. possibly a force for good. But yeah, <laughs> it, it was definitely it was definitely a whole lot of fun. I'll say that. Um, another comment from Connor Minetto, who says, "Is the achievement of finishing above the Wanderers a small club trophy?" That, that I think for a lot of our fans. Um, it, I got the impression going into yesterday. Yesterday was a be-all and end-all, and I don't think it should be. It it drives me mad. I, I, I don't want to offend Connor, but Connor, if you're listening, well, I'd, I'd switch off for a couple of minutes. Um, that small club mentality, as far as I'm concerned, as I've said countless times before, and here we go now. Here comes the mind the gap rant. Um, people who start posting that sort of nonsense and only focusing on where Arsenal are in the league are um, they're as bad as this these people who just the gooners that bang on about St. Saint, Saint Totteringham's Day you know right. as a, the only gap we need to worry about is the gap between us and whoever's top of the league last season it was Leicester this season it's Chelsea and that's the only gap that ever matters to me I think t- to be fair to Connor, I don't know if that was his, his opinion I think he was just putting out a uh... Um, a viewpoint. I, I tell you, but by the way, just going back to something we said earlier, I tell you one of the other reasons I was feeling slightly, def- or I am still feeling slightly def- deflated, it was the fact that Chelsea won their match against Everton beforehand. Um, 
and he sort of hoped that possibly they might drop some points and and we'd be a little bit closer. Um, but as it is, it's still four points. And um, we'll, we'll talk about the type of race in a minute. A um, few more few more questions around yesterday's game or comments. Um, a tall Toma says, would you take? Alexis Sanchez at Spurs again. I, I don't know that that's necessarily his 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 viewpoint, but uh, would you take the man with a swollen lip? <laughs> well, he's certainly quality, but at the moment I would question um, his attitude. Um, not just the old fat lip, but he he's gone around a bit like a, a, a spoiled brat at Arsenal. I, I I think first and foremost, I don't think Pochettino would have him for that reason. He likes the right attitude from his player. As he looks at that right attitude, he likes them younger, I think, that he can build them at that right attitude. And I think someone coming in like that might well break the balance. But that, that's what I think he might think. But for me, the same sort of opinion. So I probably wouldn't take him. If you take him, you, you really you, you, you kick out Ericsson because you've got a similar player. And I, and I, I wouldn't take him on balance. Uh, well, I, I, disagree, I, I agree with what you're saying, Dave. I wouldn't take him, but for me, I, I, I disagree with what you're saying about he's a, he, you would have to he's a sim, similar or same player to Ericsson because Alexis Sanchez is not. He's a selfish, egotistical, <laughs> up his own arsehole, um, fat-lipped... Um, well, that's the um, 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 Yeah, umpa lumpa dickhead. I watched him yesterday and he was great fun, constantly slagging his teammates off, waving his arms in the air, worrying about the fact that the Arsenal fans weren't waving a fucking poster of his damn dogs. Um, you know, it, it, the guy is just not, he's just not what our club is about. He's not what this team is about. And he's certainly not what Pochettino is about. Mm. I would, I would. So that's a, that's a no from the ginger yeah, judge. I would, <laughs> I wouldn't take an Arsenal player on, ba- on, on balance. I don't think I'll take any Arsenal player, but at all. Well, look, at that, at, look at that cunt Gallus. Yeah. Or add a bio, even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I Say no more. I, I don't think I'd, I'd take any. I mean, I, if, if you go over the years, we've had a few. Um, Pat Jennings went, went in the opposite direction. Um, the other player who's the name. Don't I'm not say gonna, it. No. Um, and that's about it. I think the only, the only, the only two that come to mind in recent times are Adebayo and, and Gallus. I don't, I don't think I'd. I'd say any Arsenal player, because as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're damaged goods. But one thing I would say is this: if you go back a few, a few years ago and you look at some of the players they had back then, you know, maybe a decade ago, or 15 years ago, or 20 years ago, there are a lot of good players they had then that could play in the Tottenham team under Pochettino. Um, Sanchez doesn't fall into that for me. I just don't think, both in terms of his ability and moreover his attitude. Um, and it ju- just sh- shows how far they've, they've slipped as a club and, and how far we've progressed. They've coasted, Jav. It's what they've done. They've been content and they've coasted. And there's been season after season of assumption and presumption that they'll continue to qualify for the Champions League. The people who are in charge there, who are on the board, don't go to games, don't give a fuck, just look at the money and... They're not football people. They're not interested in watching the team win things, see the club develop, securing the core fan base, you know, creating a match day experience. They're not interested in any of that. They're just numbers, financial numbers people. And as I've said before, people dig Joe Lewis out and they dig Enoch out and they dig Levy out. But Levy's there week in, week out. He cares about the club. Um, he's a supporter, even though some people don't think he is. And it's a, there's a different mindset around Spurs than there is to Arsenal. You know, they've just let Wenger get on with it because he's he's been ticking some of the boxes that the board wanted ticked. It's not about the boxes that the supporters want ticked. And now it's started to go south for them. It's too late. You know, the, tra- the train's already about to hit the buffers and they're just putting the brakes on now. Mm. Yeah, you're, you're upsetting a, a, an open-top bus company here who's, who's just <laughs> plummeting as we speak. Yeah. They're just going to they're just going to have to spray that bus white instead of red, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, final comment from listeners on um, yesterday. Another one from Conor Manesso. He says, "Harry Kane's success in this fixture. What does it mean? And/or what will it mean for his legacy at the club? Are his goals against Woolwich because he's got quite a record against against them? Um, the most important goals for a Spurs striker over a Champions League winner." 
Well, now we're going back to the same the same argument here, aren't we? We're putting up Arsenal up on some sort of pedestal, yeah. which is not what I, I want to do. I mean, it's it's at the end of it when he comes back after he's retired and the he waves at the crowd in front in front of another derby between Arsenal. And he, we can all say, yeah, that guy scored more. That's the time and we can say yeah you know derby day he's done that but ultimately we want to salute him when he's, he's scored the winning goal in any of our cup finals that's all or a premier league win then we point and say no, this lad 20 goals uh, plus for three seasons running we won the premier league they're the important goals they're not the arsenal goals they're just a bit of fun all yesterday was for us for, for me was just a you know well, that's great i mean don't get me wrong i want all those lads who whatever they all the spurs supporters if they got enjoyment, I don't want to spoil their enjoyment as, as how they see it. You know, it's, if they want to yell silly things and, and fine, great, that's what they're enjoying. I mean, it's a, it's a it is a day, it's a wonder. It was a wonderful day yesterday because it was a last North London derby, so that made it special. And it was a great, you know, it's a great thumping really. So that was great fun. But uh, Harry Kane's goals, nope, they're not the important ones for Harry. Silverware is. Yeah, agree completely. Uh, agree completely, Dave. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's remarkable. It's the longest ever run from a one-season wonder that I think that football has ever seen, mm-hmm. you know, in, in its history. Uh, yeah, I think ultimately for Harry now, what he needs to do and for the team is, is, is you know, score one of those goals in in a game that really, really matters. And, yeah, Champions League, semi-final, FA Cup semi-final, FA Cup final, you know, wherever wherever we end up, it needs, it just needs, that's the next step, you know, it needs to progress to the next level, um, you know, and that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's when it really, really matters. I will add something about um, the Carrie Kane, do you know, he got booked in the last two games, <laughs> he's adding a little bit of bite to it, that's only his third booking in the in Premier League this season, um, besides one against Monaco, but um, it's only those top games. I think the other one was Liverpool when we were um, The Palace game, I didn't think he deserved it. And he sort of got stuck in a little bit yesterday. Derby day, he put a little bit extra in. So he certainly doesn't shirk his responsibilities uh, for the team, I have to say. Good lad. Uh, I'll tell you something else. Again, and I, I don't want to sort of knock the whole rivalry with, with Woolwich. Um, I get that. It mean, and it means something to, to me. It means something to all of us. And... Yeah. And on 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 the day on the day of the big North London derby, I always feel the tension beforehand and, and the excitement, and it, and it's it's such a big thing. But you're absolutely right. Both you're absolutely right. He's not going to be judged on on the goals that he scores um, against Arsenal. It'll be those goals against um, you know in the cup final or, 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 or winning the league or, or whatever. But if you if you go back to the two most successful points in our history, so fifty fifty one and sixty sixty one now. We're all too young to remember um, or know a great deal about them, and obviously there were periods of time where you know we don't. There was there wasn't as much TV coverage, and there was there's, you know there's, there's seldom there aren't, there aren't so many cl- cl- clips um, all over the place. But but what we do know from what we've read and from what we've heard from other people, and even on the odds clip that does exist from those periods of time or, or things in YouTube you hear 50-51 you hear about the push and run signed 60-61 you hear about the double winning team and you hear about players like Blanche Flower and uh, Bill Nicholson and uh, as, as a manager and, and, and John White and, and, and all of these and winning the double be, beating Leicester in the cup final you actually hear very, very little about games in relation to Arsenal at, from that time it's very little yeah. Yeah. Um, even in more recent times, if you consider eighty eighty one, that period when you have Glenn Hoddle and Ricky Villa and Ozzy, and you know you think of, for example, um, the eighty one Cup final and all the all, of, all the Cup final replay, and yeah, there, there were big games against Arsenal at, 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 the, at the time, which I'm sure you both remember. But that's that's mm-hmm. the things that, that those are the moments you you, you remember, and, and those are the. When when players um, hang up their boots and and, and they're at uh, the sort of after doing the old after dinner circuit, they're talking about those moments, those those trophies, those medals, those cup finals. So um, there's a there's a bigger picture we need need to be looking at. Um, final thing I was going to add on yesterday, I, I normally um, 
the halftime entertainment I find dull, just dull as dishwater. I normally switch <laughs> off. Um, yesterday, I quite enjoyed it. Um, so they, had, they had Jürgen Klinsmann on the pitch. Um, for me, growing up as a kid and as a teenager in the 90s, he was one of, one of my favourite players of that of that era. You know, the 90s weren't the best time to be supporting Spurs. So for him to come out on the pitch um, at half time, and I, uh, that was that made my day. Um, it was also obviously fitting that the last time we finished above them, um, he was playing for us in his first spell, 94-95. Um, yeah, he did have a... Uh, Joss, was it just me? Or he, did, he did have a tendency to keep repeating himself. He kept going on about the connection with the fans. Um, yeah. <laughs> good old Jürgen. I mean, I don't... Yeah, it, was it awkward... I don't know. He's um, it's good to see him there. He's, he, mm. you know, he didn't didn't have a lot to offer really because, uh, well, personally, I think his career took a nosedive after he left us. But yeah, it was good to see him. Um, yeah, the, I suppose the relationship with the fans when when Jurgen was there, that, that they they were great days. He obviously read everything that was written about him before he joined Spurs because, you know, from his his infamous goal celebration when he you know he takes a dive, people used to say, oh, you know, I bumped into the telly and Jurgen Klinsmann fell over and all that sort of old shit. So, yeah, he um he uh, he embraced he embraced the spirit of it and uh, yeah, it was good to see him. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, interesting. I was when Paul Coit said on Twitter um, before the game that we've got a really special halftime guest. I was I was disappointed that he didn't respond to my "Is it Sol Campbell in an open coffin?" tweet. But uh, <laughs> you know, not to worry. <laughs> we can we can look, look forward to that in the new stadium, maybe. Um, <laughs> all right, let, let's briefly briefly talk about Crystal Palace in the middle of the week. Um, Josh, you and I went up there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was both our well, it was my first time. I believe it was your first time at Selhurst Park. Um, strange little ground and scrappy, scrappy game. I thought, but again, job's on. Non-league, wouldn't it? Watching football from a shed. Yeah. I love, um, I love a restrictive view. A bit of steel work in the way. Yeah, it was um, for me. The game was. It was a, a really tense affair. You know what? You know. You know how Allardyce sets up, and um, you know he's he's especially at home. He's not. He's more about you know not conceding um, than he is about winning. And it was uh, it was another one of those games where it took a it took a moment of brilliance. And um, you know, Mr. Eriksson stepped up and and did what he does. You know, when, when you need him. But it was it was a tough game. It's a uh, it's not a nice place to go, Palace. They're um, you know they're 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 an awkward side. And uh, you know, if that's what it takes for them to survive in the Premier League, then so be it. Mm. I don't know. Were you were you standing on the steps, by the way? Because it's absolute uh, mayhem. I, I was I, when the goal went in. I'd actually, I'd actually, I'd, I'd had, um, I'd spent most of the day refreshing myself, and um, I come back from the toilet and I was literally walking down the steps as Ericsson scored. Um, I, yeah. I started at the top and ended up just shy of the pitch. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, and and, and I, I could hardly walk when I came out of the stadium because I'd got done in the in the right calf. It's always the right calf, but yeah, and man alive, it was a, uh, it was carnage. Yes, good scenes, that good, good whole lot of fun, that. Yeah, absolutely, it was good. It, it was just something, a scrappy, scrappy game. Um, as you say, an old, an old-fashioned stadium. I, I liked it because we were close to the pitch. It was quite intimate. I didn't like the way the fact that there was sort of only one entrance for the away fans to get into their section. The stewarding was a bit poor. Um, in some ways it was fun, the idea of being stood um, on the steps. It was quite pleasant until when the goal went in and then it was absolute <laughs> carnage. Um, but yeah, it was good night. Again, job done. And then afterwards we went into... Um, was it the cherry tree? The pub that we went to. Yeah, it was the cherry tree. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the it's like a hardcore Crystal Palace uh, supporters pub. Yeah, walk sneaking in the back entrance of that was uh, was great. Was a whole lot of fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I kept getting told to um to by yourself to, to hide my colours, but yes, yeah, um... special shout out to David James Brooks who uh, was absolutely insistent. He was also inco- incoherent, but he was insistent that he was going to take his coat off and stand there in his Spurs shirt. 
which uh, which wasn't, wasn't 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 the greatest idea I've ever heard suggested. But to, on reflection, we should have possibly cut him adrift, let him do it, and fucked off out the door. But we we got our photo taken with um uh with a, it was a, there was a there was a big um palace flag, palace colours. And there was this this person in the. In the That's in Malcolm the, Allison, isn't it? It's, but, it's uh, Malcolm, but, but we thought it Malcolm was. Malcolm Allison. Because uh, you, you said, oh, it's somebody. I know, I know it was, obviously wasn't cha- Chairman Mao, but I think you said, oh, it was Shea somebody. Shea Guevara, like, wasn't it? Yeah, it, was, it looked like a, a revolutionary figure or somebody important, but it was, of course it was Malcolm Allison. Um, <laughs> which is quite amusing. Um, just on. Just bring it back to, to yesterday. So. And obviously with a, with a Palace, Palace win as well. That's now nine wins on the spin, which is. Um, the best sequence um, of matches that we've won in a row since October 1960. Yeah. Um, when we when we went on to win the league, and that season we won 13 in a row. So we could we could with four games left left we could equal that. Um, this has to be arguably whatever happens this season. I mean, we talked about we talked about previously about you know, last season and, and how good that was, but this has to be the best. Season certainly my lifetime of following Spurs. It, it, the, I know we haven't won a trophy, but you can't argue with with our league our league standing and and what we've achieved and and what I think is it now four clean sheets on the spin as well. Yeah, yeah. Five clean sheets out of the last six. Yeah, um, a lot of a lot of stats went missing yesterday. I think important ones, if you like, of, of our achievement um, because the Arsenal game seemed to. Uh, take precedence this silly 22 years and then trying to force Wenger to admit that we own North London and all this sort of silly stuff and I, I'm, I must admit I was closing my ears to all that rubbish really and, you know we could we could just as easily stumble next year and, and they could finish above us mm. so um, I, I wouldn't get too cocky too quickly but uh, yeah some of those stats of, of what we've achieved and I didn't think we'd, we'd get this far keep winning games um, I, I just thought that no, it, 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 you just can't keep winning um, and, and Palace I'm going to go back to Palace here because that was a real trip up one for me um, they were far more of a, 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 a adversary than Arsenal were yesterday um, and, and Sam sets them up really well and I, I did think we can have a lot of trouble there but again I'll come back to the fact that the threat comes from all over the pitch from us these days that's the difference from previous seasons they're confident they, they kept, we kept probing trying different little things and then uh, Ericsson tries a shot to uh, distance and a cracker it was. And, and that, makes a, that makes a massive difference. And it's quite something to win nine games at any one on the trot. I don't know if even Chelsea have tried that this season. I'm not sure. I think they, I think they got about 11 or something. Well, they or got 12, to 11 yeah. or 12, didn't they? Yeah, because yeah, that's what I said earlier. They Beating us at the lane would have been would have set the new Premier League record here for con- consecutive wins. All so, right. Yeah, they've equaled it. They've definitely equaled it, whatever mm, it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, um, yeah, as I said, the Arsenal game, ugh, okay, to, possibly did believe that we we should we we were going to win anyway. But for me, Palace was awkward. Um, West Ham Friday is going to be incredibly awkward. I think Bilic is in a position where he's caught in two minds. Does he hold on for the point and try not to get thrashed, or does he give it a go and try to turn us over? And if I think if he comes at us, he's going to get they're going to get fucking whacked. Yeah, he'll defend. I've actually no, they're not playing well. Yeah. Um, they're not out of trouble. They're at what thirty eight points. Um, they're gonna they're, they're gonna try and keep a point. I think they'll they'll do the same as Palace. Has yeah, thirty nine at the moment. But they played uh, what they they play thirty five, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, thirty yeah. nine points at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, so um, they're, they're under, still under. I mean, I, I don't see them going down. If they didn't win another game, I suspect they'll stay where out of trouble. But um, they won't see it that way. He'll, he'll want another point. Another point will make all the difference for them. Yeah, I mean, in the past, I would have said West Ham, even when they're poor, um, they would turn up. They were against us. It's their cup final. They'd, they'd raise their game. Um, I thought Arsenal might do that to some degree yesterday. Um, they didn't. I don't think West Ham are going to be either. I just think they've been utterly poor this this season. And the last few matches I've, I've, I've seen of them, but they just don't look. They'd have to raise their game a lot and have a game plan, and we'd have to be below par um, for them to stand yeah. any chance. And I can't see whatever tactics they employ. Um, if they sit back and try to defend at home, I think we can we can do them. If they try to go for it, I think we can hit them on the counter. 
Yeah. Well, um, that's where Sonny comes in, isn't it? He's he's great on pace, isn't he? For count. That's yeah, why I like yeah. him. Po- possibly, yep. possibly, if the game was up, if it was, if it was, uh, if it was um, at Upton Park, then you know maybe small ground, a bit in close, well, closest to the pitch and all that. Um, I, just, I can't see, see. I can I can see this. Well, I'm I'm. I predict two nil. Hmm. I hate predictions, um, but I would probably I would probably go the same. Actually, I would probably go the same. Okay, Joss. Uh, I'll start my betting at four nil. Yeah. Okay. Half time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, three or four. Um, hopefully, uh, that's based on Billich giving it a go. If he doesn't give it a go, then one nil. Oh, so I, I, I don't. Oh, I, I hate it. it's the kiss of death, isn't it? Really trying to do this sort of stuff, but yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> dreadful okay um we're going to look at some more questions in the second half of the podcast um before we do here is bex with this week's spurs ladies update hello spurs type people uh it's bex just to let you know that the ladies have had a very subdued week following their league win last week that jav reported on so they played last sunday after the podcast was recorded against charlton and that was at the new river sport and fitness center and they lost that game three two It's always going to be a hard match. Charlton are probably the closest rivals that the ladies have got at the moment. Nonetheless, it's still bitter to lose in the league, having kept that unbeaten run right the way up until they'd won it and then for it to let slip. To compound that, they played Charlton again on the Tuesday night and that was in the Capital Women's Cup final. So two losses when they haven't had that all season must be absolutely devastating with the back-to-back. Nonetheless, we're still league winners, so I'm sure there's a little bit of give and take. And then Sunday, the 30th of April, which for most people will be like a couple of days ago, the ladies went all the way to Cardiff, that's a chaff and long journey, to the Cardiff Centre of Sporting Excellence to play there. Again, that was a league match. I'm not quite sure how Cardiff are in the Premier Women's Premier League South. How do, should they not have an old their own like Welsh League or something? Um, anyway, they lost that resoundingly 4-0. So if you're going to let it slip, then let it go all the way. None of this having a blip stuff. Um, massively disappointing again for the girls. The next game is the Women's Premier League Cup final and they play that next Sunday, the 7th of May. And guess who that's against? Of course, that's against Charlton. And that's at the Lamech Stadium at Stevenage. It's a two o'clock kick-off. Again, it would be good to go and see the Spurs ladies and get them a bit of support. So a quiet week for them. Um, after this, they only have one more league game to play and that's against West Ham which would be nice to win, but again, it's a dead rubber effectively because in case you haven't already heard, we've won the league, so yee-haw. Um, I'll keep you up to date with what happens. Uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, I am on Twitter at BunchesBex or via the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast Twitter or Facebook pages. Um, apologies for my voice sounding a little bit hoarse. I was at the Irish Centre yesterday in Haringey doing a little bit of singing um, during the Arsenal game. So thanks very much. See you next week. Bye-bye. Hi, welcome back to the second half of the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast. Thank you, Bex, as ever. Right, um, what are we going to do next? Um, David, what happened on Friday, besides you and I um, being at White Hart Lane for a stadium tour? There was a announcement, I believe. Uh, there was? He, he's not pregnant again, that? is he? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, we're going to Wembley. Ooh, we're going to Wembley, yeah. finally. Yeah, we're going to Wembley. Yeah, and it was interesting because the guy there um, seemed to illuminate us as to why we uh, Levy had been procrastinating, and it seems that um, what had happened is that he wanted a cast iron assurance from the builders that they will have the, the um, um, stadium finished for the following season. Um, there is no ifs and buts; it has to be finished. And once they've given that assurances, and I, I suspect that uh, there's a massive financial clause in it for uh, Spurs if, if they do fail um, once they got that then it's one season at Wembley So, um, which I'm looking forward I'm looking forward to it for one I must admit I think this um, this silly uh, oh, we can't play at um, Wembley I, I, I think is a nonsense I think we will I think it's a good thing for us I'm looking forward to it I prefer to be playing on the bigger pitch that way we'll hit the ground running when it goes to the new White Hart Lane because it's going to be within a, a metre or so, the same sort of size. Mm. So, um, and, and it'll be a, a similar, bigger stadium atmosphere, 
What I couldn't, what I couldn't believe is about the new Spurs just jumping across the new Spurs stadium is how high it's going to be. Um, they've only got half, halfway up with the stadium, and uh, the full size of the stadium is actually where you see the uh, logo, Cockrell logo, on the on the crane. And that's where how high the stadium's going to be. It's immense. So it's going to create quite an atmosphere. So Wembley, um, I, I think, it's, I think it's a good thing. I, I think it's well worth um, going there, especially as we can all get tickets now. Just thoughts on Wembley? Oh, thoughts on Wembley, right. OK, well, for me, it's an absolute fucking nightmare to get to. Uh, it's an even bigger night nightmare to get home from. But that aside, um, I'll continue to go. We, we need to break this hoodoo. Um, we, need to, we need to go to Wembley. I agree with Dave about the pitch dimensions. We need to go there. We need to turn some fucking teams over and... Uh, and you know, really, really break this hoodoo. I think it's it's not for me. Wembley isn't designed for football. It's just a multi-purpose general stadium. The atmosphere shit. Um, it's just it, oh, it's just it's just not a good place to be. But you know, it's what are our, our other options really? Um, you know, I can't wait to get into the new stadium. And you know, it's just one of those things that we got to suffer. Ultimately, you know, we're not an Arsenal. We're building our, st- our new stadium in the same postcode as the old one. So we haven't got the luxury of, you know, knocking it up and getting it all finished whilst we still continue to play in the old one. So, it's yeah, it's an inconvenience that we'll have to suffer. Um, I hope we do. I, I hope the team and our performances don't suffer. But um, in the back of my mind, being the classic Spurs pessimist that I always am, uh, I think that... Um, yeah, I think I think it, it, it will impact on uh, on next season's performances and next season's league table standings. I think I agree with everything that you just said, Joss, and and, and, and a lot of people say around you know getting to Wembley and, and we're still getting out. Um, acoustically, the stadium isn't good. It's not really designed to for football, atmosphere-wise, and and also it's going to attract. Absolutely right, David. It will, from a from a ticketing point of view, it's going to be great because it's going to give more people the chance to get to games. I think that I think Levy will lower the price of tickets. That'll be good as well. But I think, unfortunately, it's going to attract a lot of people that um, that aren't going to generate atmosphere. It will also detract a lot of people that go regularly but are just going to have the hump and say, "Oh, well, I'm not going to go to Wembley." So that yep. that's that's not good either. Um, the, I'm not too concerned about playing there. Firstly, it's, it's that being said, because it's only one season. Okay, we're, we're going to be in the new stadium the following season. Really looking forward to that. It's only going to be one season. All this stuff about oh, we struggled in the Champions League this season and Europa and all that. Um, next season, it's going to be our home. It's not going to be a makeshift home for you know half a dozen or. or or a few few games this season. It's going to be every single home match will be played there. So we'll have to. It will be our home. It won't be White Hart Lane and Wembley. It will be our home for the full year. So we'll we'll have. We've already got a bit of this season to get used to it. Next season, all of our games will, will be there. I think that will help. Um, and I think, whilst it's true, it probably won't be the fortress that White Hart Lane has become this season. Equally, I don't think it's going to. It doesn't have to be this bogey stadium that. Um, many think that Wembley has become this season and I think the sooner we hit the ground running win a couple of matches then that whole mindset will, will be put to one side and, and it'll be fine and, and I really do think it'll, I think it'll be fine honestly um, the pitch size um, David absolutely right we're going to be playing in a bigger pitch um, in the new stadium and playing at Wembley will be a good thing um we in, in in any case we train at Hotspur Way. We've got pitches. We've got a pitch that's the size of White Hart Lane, and then we've got another pitch that you can sort of customise to the size of Wembley or, for that matter, um, other stadiums. So so they're, they're used to adjusting and playing on different training pitches, depending on what 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 the next match is going to be. Uh, so I can't see any of that being an issue. And by the way, I don't know if you recall a few years ago when AVB was manager and we were playing at White Hart Lane and teams were coming and they were parking the bus. And we were trying to break them down and play all this sort of sideways football under AVB, very slow build up, and we weren't getting anywhere. It might have been at the beginning of AVB's last season, and he made the point that the pitch at White Hart Lane was too small. And then forevermore, we were talking about it. Or it, was, it was being talked about by some fans or some people in the media. 
don't hear anybody mention that anymore. It's gone. It's completely put to one side. That that's not not an issue. So it just requires a few of the right results of Wembley, and no one's going to be talking about Wembley being a big big pitch and this that and the other. So yeah, I, I think it's a load of bollocks, really, personally myself. Um, we had a comment from Andy Hawker, a bit of a rant. Uh, most important question for me, why did the club make a statement two months ago confirming that the new stadium will not be called White Hart Lane? Especially as far as we know, no one has taken up the naming rights yet. Um, he goes on to say, but why can't the stadium be called the Nike Stadium at White Hart Lane or the Alliance Arena at White Hart Lane? The name White Hart Lane is famous and should attract sponsors. There's only one hotspur, there's only one White Hart Lane. Well, that's a twofold answer. I mean, it, to the fans, it will be White Hart Lane. It sits over the same footprint. It's White Hart Lane. There's nothing any sponsor can do about that. But that's what the fans will call it. But it's up to uh, the new sponsors as to what they want to call it. They may well be encouraged to call it Nike White Hart Lane or whoever wants to sponsor it. But he's, he's put it out there and said, we're not going to call it White Hart Lane. There's a, there's a carrot dangled. Bring your money bring your name we'll take it it's businessmen it, football is you know first and foremost and that's what Arsenal have suffered because they've forgotten about winning things and let um, Wenger carry on sort of earning the money and we've got to make sure we don't go down that same avenue and forget about the football but it is a business we have to make money we have to stand on our own two feet and if we can sign anything like the, the deal that Chelsea have done which is a phenomenal I think about 15 million a season I can't think what it was it's 90 million wasn't it I think mm. um, their, their last uh, sponsors um, for their shirts um, if we can start getting deals like that you know it's, it's going a long way to paying uh, for the stadium and then we start to enter into a, a, a the upper echelon to be able to sign top quality players and that's the only way you're going to do it you're going to have to attract sponsors um, wherever you can I was watching snooker the other day and even the, the glasses they're sipping from now have, have a sponsor's name on the glass so um, beware when you walk in the new stadium you might have something stamped on your back before you go in <laughs> it's geographical for me I, I, I agree with Dave's point about the footprint it's um, I mean technically it's, we've never played in White Hart Lane it's, uh, it's Bill Nicholson Way if you want to get pedantic mm. about it but um, it's Oh, here we go. Sorry to go back to the Gooners, but they, they, they played at Highbury. You know, the stadium was in Highbury. The Emirates is now called the Emirates because it's in the middle of a fucking disused industrial estate and it's sponsored by the Emirates. So they lost their identity when they moved for the second time, I may add. Yeah, um, second time, yeah. Yeah, ch ch change postcodes. Uh, as David said, our stadium is, new stadium is being built on the footprint of the old one it doesn't matter what corporation comes in what they want to call it look at um look at our our, our cockney mate um mike ashley up at uh, up at newcastle he called it the um, cheap sportswear shit fest fucking direct arama dome or whatever he called it and uh, you know and they, the, the geordie still still call it um I don't know, i'm sure they've got a number of different names for it but um you know so any corporate or, or, or a corp corporation could come in and call it what they want. We will still refer to it as White Hart Lane. The players, I'm sure, everybody will refer to it as White Hart Lane. It's those media outlets that are contractually bound to call it, you know, yeah. the um, the you know whatever it is that that they will continue to use it. So, as far as I'm concerned, nothing will change in that respect. Um, so, I think Andy personally, he, he he might have got a little bit too caught up in the in the uh, you know in the um, in the corporate machinations of the entire deal but um you know I, i'm more worried about people turning up to our ground with selfie sticks and half and half scarves if i'm honest with you yeah yeah i'm fucking off after 10 minutes and giving up on the team um right uh okay just before we do questions a quick 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 question to both of you um four points behind chelsea we've got 77 they've got 81 four games left is it possible? Can we do it? Can we can we catch them? Um, let me come to David first because you and I talked about this on Friday, that, and that was before yesterday's games. Is it is it possible, or, or am I just dreaming a dream? Well, no, it's, it's, it's possible, but it's not in our hands. What I will say is, I think we we have every chance of winning every game. I really do now. I mean, what, the last two games have really proved that, especially to me. Uh, that we've, you know, Palace was a very difficult game, and you were right; they were nervy. Um, but yesterday, you know, after the Chelsea game, I thought, well, I hope they don't know the result. But if they did, it didn't show. 
we carried on just doing our job and we'll carry on doing our job the last four games less is going to be a difficult one I, I admit but I still think we can do that so it, it's just purely I'm, fr- I'm afraid out of our hands whether Chelsea managed to throw it well Middlesbrough managed to take two points off of Man City and they've got to play Chelsea so look I haven't given this up and neither of Spurs and last year that's what they learned you know, every game counts it doesn't matter it's for the fans and, and for your own um, pride you keep going, you keep winning games. And at the end of it, if we still lose it by four points, that will mean the second to last game we will already know. But if we carry on winning them all, we can hold our heads high. And people will be saying, and a lot of people are saying in the media, that we over the last two seasons we've been by far the best side. And, and I take a little bit of pride from that. It doesn't bring us silverware, but I do take some pride from it. But yeah, we, we can, but we're relying on Chelsea. Yep, yeah, agree. Um, with West Ham away Friday night. Uh, Manchester United at home Sunday afternoon Leicester away Thursday night Old City away Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock that's what we've got you know Chelsea well let's, they're running fucking hell it's a it's a it's a breeze really Middlesbrough at home West Brom away um, Watford at home and then Sunderland away I was uh, saying to my good friend Chris Canning um, in the pub an hour and a half ago I would love us to get it down a goal difference um, I, I, so desperate for Chelsea to slip up uh, in one of their so-called lesser games in this running you know somebody like yeah. uh, like Watford or Sunderland who are already relegated now just 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 to offer some resistance and even just just nick a draw just to make it you know a little bit a little bit closer than it is at the moment and just to just to let them know that they've not cruised it and you know Chelsea for me Costa he's off and he you know Ezra will be gone another 800 million quid coming out of Roman's fucking oil well for next season but yeah Watford give my game West Brom Pulis or you know what I'd, what I'd give for them to turn them over but as Dave says it's out of our hands mm-hmm. and, and you're right you take pride in the performances this season second season in a row that we've played the best football and we won't win the league again we go on about the young squad the goal difference I mean plus 49 where the fuck has that come from could you, you I mean we're plus 49 best in yeah. the league at the moment Chelsea next on 43 then you're looking at Liverpool City you know they're on 28 yeah, half half, aren't they? It's, half. It's, it's, it's incredible, incredible. And that alone, bearing in mind that I'm, I'm sure Levy and Pochettino would have been talking at this stage of Pochettino's career with us that we are still in transition. What we had once under Pochettino, we've had one season of transition, but then all of a sudden we're, we're, we're challenging for the uh, last season. You've had, what's he been there? Four years? There's three years? Or three, three years. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, so three years. So you've got a, a, a one season effectively of transition, and then two seasons where when we've been challenging for the league. Incredible. I mean, just never mind a goal difference, but 22 goals conceded. That's that's the best yeah. defence in the league. That, you know, 22 goals conceded. Teams that win the championship um, concede that, you know, that that number or there or thereabouts. And when, when, whenever in the past have you associated Tottenham teams with having a strong defence? Um, by the way, this isn't, not just talking about this season. Last season, we had the best defence, even though we conceded five on the last day. I think we still had the yeah. best record. So we've been doing it, doing it consistently. Um, just sorry, but, Jeff. Just quickly, yeah. I, w- I would love to see where Chelsea would have been this season if they'd have had European football, any sort of European football, yeah. any sort of European football which could have potentially ne- uh, necessitated injuries to key players. Yeah. Um, you know and. Yeah, it's, it's overlooked but Conte's going to possibly win the league and everyone will be going oh fucking brilliant phenomenal first season I mean he, the, the stupid half arsed bullshit came out in the week with an interview saying oh you know we're not we're not buying the league we don't do it that way and you're thinking hang on a minute mate you owe you owe one and a half billion quid to Roman what are you talking about I, I, the geezer's deluded did you see them yesterday they're celebrating no, I've got, I can't game. watch them, mate. Oh, can't watch them. well, the Everton game. Oh, they were all hugging each other, cheering to the fans. It honestly looked like a bit of a coronation that did. Start oh, the coronation. Was, was it? Was it like Liverpool when they when they nicked that two all draw against West Brom? Uh, was it? Was it two all? I can't remember when they um, up at Anfield. It was earlier in the season when it. They um, Liverpool were all, all the players were holding hands, uh, standing oh, right. in front of the cop uh, and celebrating. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a point of celebration, and I looked. I thought, geez. 
you really are behaving like that. That's it. You know, they clearly thought Everton was a trip up game, and they, 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 Everton gave them a bit of a game for half an hour. You know, I did think, well, it's not much in it. I hope they might nick this. Then they sort of got away with one great goal um, from Pedro, and 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 their their attitude afterwards. And I can only hope. I'm only saying all this. I don't want to talk about Chelsea that much, but I only hope that that very attitude is the one that will trip them up in the next uh, Absolutely. four games. Yeah, yeah. Get complacent against someone that yeah. they, they expect to turn over handsomely, and then uh, yeah, yeah, it all goes south. I yeah. think you know. Um, We've obviously got to win all our games. That, that's all, all we can do, as you both said. And, and one thing that Pochettino always says is just concentrate on, on you know, that old adage of take it one game at a time. At, yeah. at, at, at a time. So, with that in mind, I think we're going to win on. I've said this earlier on. I said two 0 I think we'll win on Friday and go to within a point of Chelsea. Obviously, they then play a few days later on Monday. The pressure will be on them. Now, they're at home to Middlesbrough, which they should win comfortably. And arguably, the most difficult game um, of their, whatever it was, five remaining ones, it was yesterday against Everton. And having won that, you look at their remaining fixtures and you think, well... That, you know they've got the difficult one out of the way, so they should be fine from here on in. I think Middlesbrough will, will pick something up, and they're a poor side. But they held Manchester City yesterday. They were um, robbed yesterday, Jeff. Middlesbrough were robbed yesterday. Yes, they were. Yes, they were robbed. And they're what? They're on twenty-eight points. They're okay, <laughs> four points adrift of Swansea, um, and six of Hull. They'll probably go down, but they'll have to get. They'll have to get something. Um, arguably, they'll actually need a win against Chelsea. Um, I'm not going to. I won't say that. Predict that. But I think they could get a point. Um, and if that happens, well, then it's suddenly two points. So we shall see. We shall see how, how that pans out. Um, right. Let's finish off with some questions. Um, before I do that, just another mention. Um, on Thursday, 11th of May, I'll be interviewing Martin Cloak and Cat Law from the Tottenham Hotspur Supporters Trust. Um, if you've got any questions um, that you'd like me to ask them, I've already had a few, then please send them over to me. Um, you can do so via Twitter. The Twitter handle is at THF Podcast. You can do so via the Tom Motsper Family Podcast Facebook page, and you can also do, do so um, via Spurs at the Tom Motsper Family Podcast dot com. Um, you can e- e- email me via that. Um, right, let's finish off with a few quick questions. Um, at jbear67 asks, what do you make of the decision to start Trippier over Walker? A slight worry, wasn't it? Um, this paper talk about uh, uh, Walker going to Man City. Um, and, and I've no doubt he's on about 70, I believe. And uh, they're saying that City will just double his salary to 140 will be the offer. Uh, and there's no doubt that um, as the players sort of sit in their houses, there are certain people coming, you know, certain clubs coming along showing a little bit of leg. For them, um, and, and trying to attract them, uh, you, you, uh, we'd all turn around and say, "Well, why would you want to leave?" I mean, for Christ's sake, I've never seen a, for some years is a club quite as together as Spurs are. And not only that, you know, with a with a great young manager, with a great new ground coming and all the facilities, but there's one thing that does is go missing, and that's their salaries. Now I know they've all been good enough to sign them, uh, and, and that they've, they've committed themselves effectively. And I do believe he will stay, but it's a bit of a worry when he suddenly gets dropped and Trippier comes in. I have to say, there's a, a little niggling thing, and, and also Lamella as well. I, I, I agree with Joss actually. I'd be surprised to see him in a Spurs shirt again. I hope I do, but um, yeah, that, I, I, I understand the question. They're quite right to ask it. I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. Yeah. Uh couple of things for me um, with regards to Mr Walker against Palace I thought he was shite um, so I've got no issue with um, Pochettino picking Trippier Trippier for me crosses the ball is a much better cross for the ball than Walker he's more direct he's um, instinctive he doesn't put his studs on the ball drag it back and look for a pass inside he will take it first time and try to get it to the back post um, And it's a decision for Pochettino. You know, Pochettino sees what he sees in training. He's the one who assesses the attitude of the players. And ultimately, what do you you have a look at yesterday's result? Walker played the last 15 minutes and we were already 2-0 up against the arse. So, you know, if if Walker wants off, then then so be it. I don't know whether he'll he'll, he'll get the opportunity to leave. 
I've said before, you know, when it comes to football, it's it's great. Yeah, the money's great, and, it, and to some players, it, it is all about money. Diego Costa certainly, you know, one of those. Um, but I think what you got at Spurs, as Dave said, there is a togetherness. There's, um, I've said it before, you know, professional football is is brilliant. You know, all the riches that it brings, but there's there's something about playing football with your mates ultimately playing football with your mates and enjoying it and people all this constant bullshit about Deli Alley going here there and everywhere well if Deli Alley goes whoever buys him is going to have to buy Dyer they're going to probably have to buy Kane as well you know you, you can see the c- togetherness within the squad and, and half the time most of the time it's just uh, it's just newspaper talk unfortunately the Sun you know Sky Sports they've got to have something to fill their pages in the airtime Indeed. with and at the moment we're the, uh, we're the flavour of the month and that, that for me is a great thing um, you know they're, they're, if, if, if clubs are you know be, if being touted to buy our players then uh, then so be it you know I, I okay so I've read a fair seen a few comments on social media on, on Twitter in particular around this um, I think people are reading far too much into it so if you Go back to February, right? When we were in the FA Cup, so Tri- Trippier was getting his opportunity in cup games, um, but at that point in the league, it was pretty much Walker. Then go forward a bit, end of March, um, England games, Walker was involved with that. So come the beginning of April, when we played Burnley, um, Trippier started that match, which wasn't a big surprise because you, you know, Walker had played in the middle of the week, I think on the Tuesday for England, and. Um, Mauricio does have a tendency not to rush players back who've, who've played international football. Um, plus, you throw in the whole link with um, uh, Trippier being a uh, Burnley player. Uh, maybe there was there was something in that to get him playing against his, his old club. So Tri- Trips come, comes in in that match, does really well, plays well. So that's always going to be if, if any player comes in and, and, and makes a good good case, that's always going to give a, a manager a selection headache. Um, we then play. Swansea middle of the week. I think Walker came in for that match, um, and and then it continues. And you and you look at the rest of the whole of last month. We had a lot of matches. We had two midweek games: Palace and Swansea. Um, it's not any surprise that he's alternating the fullbacks. He's done this before, Pochettino. He did it earlier in the season, December, January time. He did it last season again. The same sort of window when we had. Um, lots of matches over for example the Christmas period um, then he was also alternating the left backs he hasn't got that, that, that luxury now because Danny Rose is injured so Davis has, has got a start pretty much so I'm not too overly concerned about that I think Trippier's had a chance he's actually taken those opportunities with both hands and he's done well and and you're right he, he's he's a much better crosser of the ball so Walker's just going to have to fight, fight for his, his place. I don't think that's any bad thing. And I think most of the players at Tottenham realise that. They realise it's, it's a squad game. Um, you know, Ben. You don't hear Ben Davis, for example, um, crying in his cornflakes because he's second fiddle to um, uh, Danny Rose. He knows that Rose is, is, an, is, a, is an exceptional player, but he also knows that probably over the course of the season he'll get his fair share of opportunities, and he's, he's part of a great squad. So. I'm not. I'm not overly fussed about that. And you're right. He didn't. Walker didn't cover himself in glory um, on Wednesday, but he'll come back. Um, there'll be another chance, um, and uh, and I'm sure he, Walker will, will, will take it with with take his opportunity with, with both hands. It's not a bad thing to have that have a bit of competition and a bit of a kick up the backside. Um, complacency is never a good thing. Uh, next one, Mark Stoll um, says, "Finishing above Arsenal is a big deal for most of our fan base. What are your, what are you happiest about regarding this season, Joss?" Uh, Chelsea turning ch- really, really ch- pissing on Chelsea's chips at the lane, two 0 Deli Alley. Thank you very much, David. Well, to go for a game. Um, I was there for the Man City one when we duffed them up um, again. We they were unbeaten, and a Man and City were being touted as champions elect at that stage after six games, um, and uh, we absolutely tore them apart. And in fact, Man City never recovered after that. Not really. Did, we dicked them. We dicked them four one, didn't we? Two nil. We said four one the season before last. Before yeah. 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 <clears throat> um. 
loads of games I've, I've enjoyed, but I think if, if you're going to ask me what, what's made me happiest about this season, it's just the fact that, that we're there again, that we are the only team for a second season chasing the league leaders and providing a challenge. I know last season we ended up finishing third, but we were, we were the only one that was really ch- chasing Leicester and putting, putting some degree of pressure. And we're, we're doing it again this season when nobody gave us a chance at the beginning of the season. Um, if you go back and look at all the predictions from the so-called experts, um, whether they're media pundits or uh, people who've played the game or, or, or just just journalists um, that, that do it for a living, they haven't played the game. They're, most of them didn't have us down in the top four. If they did, probably had us, had us down for fourth. I don't think anybody had us down, down second or, or, or better. So... Just to do that again for me is is um, is very pleasing. Um, Sorry, Jeff, just, just quickly. Oh, go, go on, Dave. No, I was just, just going to say, but I didn't expect us to be as competitive this season um, because last year I thought was our one opportunity and I thought all the big boys would spend this year. We will struggle to get top four. So in answer to Mark Stoll's question, I am happiest that we are fighting for that almost top spot now. Um, second place, we're solid at the moment. So, simply as that, I think that's real progress, and I'm that's my, I'm happiest about this season. Yeah, agree. Bearing in mind, it is as far as I'm sure the the board are concerned and the club are concerned, it's still a transitional uh, transitional season. Um, mm. And it also, we're doing this in spite of um, the uh, the satellite media's obsession with uh, giving us a fucking kick in whenever they can get the red naps on screen. Um, <laughs> you know, because we never play well, do we? It's always the opposition. Yeah, as Alan Smith said yesterday, Harry Kane's definitely dived. Yeah, he's, he's dived there. Oh, Harry Kane's had a dive, and you you watch, you know, even though we're all watching the same replay <laughs> of uh, of him being found. But uh, yeah, no, in spite of all that, it's uh, yeah, good. Okay, final final two questions. John Steggles, another one from John Stegall saying goodbye to the old lady in style. Can we do it? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely, and that will come uh, yeah, with Manchester United, and, and I think um, Manchester United's not in a great place. They deserve a tanking from us, and I think we'll give them a tanking. Even with Mourinho, who's, who really is the top boy for um, parking a bus, whatever's needed, blocking <laughs> and finding finding a spoiler somewhere, um, I don't think he'll manage it this time at the lane. I think it'll be too rocking for them, and I think we will go out in absolute style. Yep, I agree completely. If we score early, we'll score plenty. And um, to answer John's point directly, I'll be saying goodbye to the old lady in style because I'm going to have a bath and put a suit on for the game. Um, Head to toe, oozing brute. (laughs) That should be that should be quite quite a game in a in a a fortnight. Looking forward to that one. yeah, of course, of course we can. Of course, of course we can do it. And um, just um, yesterday, by the way, I should have said this earlier, but the, the game against Arsenal yesterday, the second half, that when we scored those two goals, and afterwards, it actually re- reminded me of um, when we played United last season at home, and the second half when we got goals in quick, quick, quick succession, and we were sort of all over them. And I felt that yesterday, and I can, and I can feel us doing the same to, to United. If we can, if we can get. Amongst early on and get a goal, then I don't think I don't think they'll, they'll be able to re- reply. My only concern with with United is if they get an early goal and park the bus and just frustrate. But he hasn't got the players, Jav. He, uh, Eric Bay he, he knackered himself yesterday, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, he's um, he, he hasn't got he hasn't got the centre halves at the moment. He's um, uh, it completely. Mourinho's issues at the moment with um, Shaw's out. With, with injuries. Yeah, it, it, it's completely. It goes against the way he plays football. He hasn't got Ibrahimovic to fucking bang it long to at the moment. Uh, you know, it's um, it, Mourinho's got to earn his money at the moment, and um, I'm looking forward to the way um, the way, way he sets up. As I said, if we score early, then I think um, it will be damage limitation for them. But I can't see I can't see them nicking one against us, mate. Well, unless Rashford takes a fucking dive. Yeah, Rashford. Yeah, we so, okay. So final question. Talk, talking of that, talking of that, that of that game against United. Sam Diggins asks, with one more home game left to go, who would you like to score that last goal at White Hart Lane? Harry Kane. Easy. English. He's going to have a long. Um, 
uh, um, um, career with us, and he'll always look back and say he scored the last one at White Hart, the old White Hart Lane. That's it. Easy. Well, for me, the amount of money I've thrown at Yamba Tongan and Toby <laughs> Alderville to score any time this season, fucking one of them. Bearing in mind they've slashed the price to eight to one on both of them. Um, yeah, for me, Vertonghen or Alderville, please, thirty-yard screamer or in, in off of someone's ass on the edge of the six-yard box. But yeah, it'd be nice for one of them to score this season. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd certainly like like them to get on the score sheet. Whether it's um... could you imagine the scenes? Now, you saw Vertonghen yesterday. You know, yeah. Yeah, control oh, with yeah, the left, shame. shoots shoots with the right. Petr Cech has to really, you know, really get his left arm out to to put that round. But if that had gone in, the fucking place would have erupted. They were lucky. Cech played well. He did well. That's the most saves he's made in the Premier League this season. Seven yeah. was his record previous, and now he's um, we've upped him to nine. So, you know, I would, um, I'd like those two players to, to score to get on the score sheet from now to the end of the season. I don't care whether it's at White Hart Lane or, or elsewhere. Um, uh, obviously, if Kane, the, the obvious answer is Harry Kane. Yeah. One of one of her own and all of that. I would like who would who would I like to score the last goal at White Hart Lane? Hugo Lloris. That time he gets his <laughs> f- f- finger out and score a goal. Pat Jennings did it. I Pat Jennings did it against the oh, United. Oh. Alex Stepney. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, Listen, Jeff. Uh, you and I have seen enough of Hugo Lloris's kicking this season. The only way that he's going to score is if it comes off Potch's chin. Not a chance, mate, at the moment. What are the odds? What are the odds? I, I, I fancy a flutter. Well, what's your stake? I don't say T-bone. <laughs> um, what are depends, you talking depends, about? depends on the odds. Depends on the odds. What, on Larice scoring? Larice scoring at White Hart Lane. Yeah, the, and the, the, the final. Oh, you're probably looking at north of 500,000 to one. All right, I'll stick a quid on then. Um, that would be a good return. Right. Um, Hi, Rob. The next, <laughs> the next podcast will be um, on Saturday, day after the West Ham match. Um, Joss, thank you as ever. No, it's a pleasure, Joff. Thanks very much for the invite. No problem. David, thank you. Well, a pleasure here as well. And what a day. Thanks very much. After the Arsenal game to do it. Cheers. It certainly is. Um, as ever, the future's bright. The future's really white. Good night. in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out and we'll talk out over her.